Number 43. Pure iron metal can be produced by the reduction of iron 3 oxide with hydrogen gas. And then we have letter F. What will happen to the concentration of each reactant and product at equilibrium if the temperature of the system is increased? Okay, we have something at equilibrium. All of a sudden, we shock the system. We're increasing the temperature in this case, so we got to bring it back to equilibrium. These are are Le Chatelier's principles. How do we bring it back to equilibrium when the temp has increased? Now, the first thing is with equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle, if you're talking about temperature, it's going to make it so much easier if you immediately attack this delta H value, okay? So what I mean by that is I want to basically express this in the balanced equation by saying, where is the heat going to be on? Is the heat going to be on the reactant side or is it going to be on the product side? Remember, delta H is enthalpy. It's the heat that's produced during this reaction. Now, I don't care what number this is. This could have been a thousand, right? Or it could have been one. The whole thing is that this is a positive number. And remember, delta H is that are positive. This is endothermic. And endothermic reactions always absorb heat. They do not release them. They hold them in. So whenever you see that you have a positive delta H, endothermic, the heat is always going to be on the reactant side. So I'm just going to say plus heat here. Now since I did that, I could care less what's going on over here. And now I have all the information that I need to figure out the, the, you know, what's going to happen. So now we go down to the rules. If I do increase the temperature, right, and if you increase the temperature by a lot, it's way too hot, right? Way too hot. And me personally, if it's way too hot outside, I'm not going to be outside. I'd rather be inside, right? So if it's way too hot, I don't want to be anywhere near the heat. I go inside. That's what chemical equilibria do as well. They will shift away from the heat and literally look for that word heat. Here is the heat. If it's way too hot, would it make sense to go to the heat? No, you want to go away from the heat. So the, uh, we're going to be basically doing the forward reaction. We're going away from that word heat. And now we drew an arrow so we can follow. Well, look at your gases first right? These are your two gases. They are definitely going to be affected by concentration because they are in the K expression. So since this is the uh, reactant side and this is the product side and we're going this way, the reactant side is going to decrease and the product side is going to increase. So H2 is going to drop and H2O is going to rise. So I have two of the answers already. H2 is going to decrease and H2O will increase in concentration. Now, here's the thing. With solids, remember, they are not in the K expression. So, would they be affected by concentration? No, they will not. The concentration of Fe2O3 and the concentration of Fe would not be affected because they are solid. So anytime that you see a solid in there, no effect. So the concentration of Fe2O3 and the concentration of Fe will both be not affected, so no effect. So there are your four answers. Decrease on H2, increase on H2O, and for the two solids, they will not be affected. But some of you might be saying, well, 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 Christina, wait a minute, right? How, how does this stay the same when the reactants are dropping? And how does this stay the same when the products are increasing? Well, there is a drop here, and there is an increase here, but the only thing is that it's not concentration, aka how active they are. The only thing that's decreasing and increasing for the solids is the mass. So you will lose mass in the Fe2O3, and you will gain mass in the Fe solid, but the concentration, and that's what they said, has no effect, and that's the difference. Okay? All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are done with this problem. Whew.
That one was a long one. Five parts. No. Five parts? A, B, C, D, E, F. Six parts. So, that was a lot. If you wouldn't mind, please press the subscribe button. That will help the channel out. And I thank you so much for that. Let's keep rocking and rolling. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. Not only in chem, but, you know, in any other class that you're taking. Whether it's a foreign language, uh, social studies, math, or if you're taking another uh, science like physics. By the way, if you are taking math, any math, or physics, we may be able to help you out there too. We got math and physics problems on the channel as well. So go check the channel out. All right. Thank you so much. And I will see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.